a man who worked for Kelly as an alleged runner, testified under subpoena for the prosecution and described Kelly's home as a strange place. He told the jury that Kelly's girls and girlfriends had to get permission for most things, this was under Kelly's rules. He testified he often saw women and the young girls, but he wasn't allowed to talk to them. Between 2007 and 2009, Anthony Navarro worked for Kelly in his Chicago area home studio, carrying out such duties as answering the phone, picking up food and guests, and driving them to the airport or around town. Navarro's testimony appeared aimed at supporting some of the prosecutor's sex trafficking and racketeering charges placed against Kelly. The charges describe the singer as the head of a criminal enterprise of managers, bodyguards, and other assistants who allegedly helped Kelly to recruit women and underage girls for sex and pornography and to cross state lines for that purpose. Prosecutors asked Navarro who were the guests at Kelly's house. He said they were girlfriends of Rob. They then asked who was he driving during his driving runs. To which he replied, mainly it was girls. They wore street clothes if they were going to outside locations, but they would be in pajamas type of clothing if they were going to Kelly's house. The girls had to get permission for most things, according to Navarro. When he went on tour with Kelly, he and other members of Kelly's entourage would invite people to after parties following concerts. They would hand out handwritten pieces of paper with Kelly's phone number. Navarro said they would hand them out in the crowd, at malls and restaurants. On cross-examination, defense lawyer Becker asked Navarro if women would wait in the studio for hours. He replied, sometimes, yes. Were they free to leave if they wanted to? Navarro replied, yes. Could they wait days? Navarro replied, yes. He went on to say, he didn't know the details of the women's visits. Becker then asked Navarro if he ever heard the girls at the house call R. Kelly, Daddy. Navarro said, yes. She then asked if in his life experience, the word daddy is used as a term of endearment. Navarro said, I don't know what that means. The judge then told Becker to move on from the question. Becker went on to ask if people requesting to leave the house were forbidden to do so. Navarro said there have been times when people wanted to leave and they couldn't, citing reasons such as a ride wasn't available or they couldn't get in touch with Kelly, but they could walk out the door. She asked did he ever see Kelly armed? Navarro said no. Did you ever see any physical abuse at the studio? Navarro said no. Did you ever see Kelly having sex in the studio? Navarro said no. Did you ever see verbal abuse in the studio? Navarro said. Yes. Becker pointed out that he told prosecutors, in February 2020, that he never saw physical or verbal abuse in the studio. She then asked. Were there times employees were reprimanded? Navarro said, yes. On redirect, Assistant U.S. Attorney Elizabeth Geddes asked Navarro to compare his time working for Kelly with his other music industry experiences. He replied, It was a weird time for me. The things you had to do were just a bit uncomfortable. It was almost like the twilight zone. You went into the gate and it was like a different world, just a strange place. R. Kelly's primary care doctor. Chris McGrath also testified under subpoena on Thursday that he was Kelly's doctor for 25 years, until 2019. He also testified that he was a social friend who visited his home sometimes for social events like parties and dinners. McGrath said he diagnosed Kelly with genital herpes, he informed Kelly and told him to tell his sexual partners. He said he'd been prescribing Voltrex for Kelly since at least 2007, but could not say specifically when he concluded Kelly actually had herpes. The doctor told jurors that he first became aware of the possibility Kelly might have herpes much earlier as a June 5, 2000 visit. McGrath said he called to request a prescription 
for what he called the blue pill. The phone calls seemed to be frequent for the blue pills. Kelly called so often for medication that McGrath eventually memorized the singer's phone number. McGrath eventually told Kelly to take the pills daily. The pharmacy he worked at was also near a McDonald's, where Kelly allegedly met one of his accusers. Prosecutors questioning on Kelly's apparent herpes was to establish that he was well aware of his diagnosis and that he gave it to partners without telling them. But Kelly's attorneys had argued herpes is not life-threatening, so Kelly shouldn't be charged with passing it on to a minor. They specifically argued the herpes exposure charge should be dropped because herpes is a virus and not an acute bacterial venereal disease, such as syphilis or gonorrhea. They also argued that racketeering charges should also be dismissed because they said they fell outside the five-year statute of limitations. On cross-examination, defense attorney Nicole Blank Becker tried to challenge McGrath on the nature of herpes. She asked, you can say 100% he has herpes. McGrath answered, I feel that 100% he has herpes. She then asked, are you saying, as in, I feel like it's freezing in here. McGrath responded, I believe that 100%, based on his exam, the treatment that he had, and the response to therapy. Becker then asked, can't you use the herpes meds to treat other things? The doctor would repeat the word three times to drive home his point. Herpes, herpes, herpes. Roger Canoff, a former assistant district attorney in New York City, shared his thoughts on the doctor's testimony with CNN. He said, it is difficult to prove because it is not easy to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant knew he was infected when the sexual intercourse took place. However, testimony from a doctor who was treating Kelly is damning evidence. It shows that as far back as 2007, Kelly knew he had a venereal disease. If it can be proven that he knew and that he continued to have sexual intercourse, then the offense can be proven against him. McGrath also testified that while Kelly had health insurance, he never paid him for his medical services during the decades he treated him. The singer would, however, invite him and his wife to parties, dinners, and pay for his flights to concerts. The government accuses Kelly of leading a criminal enterprise of managers, bodyguards, and other employees who allegedly helped Kelly to recruit women and underage girls for sex and pornography and to cross state lines for that purpose. Kelly is also accused, in the two-year-old indictment of bribery, kidnapping, forced labor, producing child pornography, and knowingly infecting some victims with a sexually transmitted disease. Kelly has pleaded not guilty to all the charges. Check out some of our videos that you may have missed, and stay tuned to our channel for more press release content.